Greetings everybody who's watching this video right now. My name is Ibrahim Lokes. I'm uh, getting on the film here from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, old name for this place is Ogapoge. It's ancestral territories of the Tewa people. And um, I've been guiding the last 15 years as a survival skills instructor as well. And I'm going to teach a little class on cordage making today. I'm also promoting a little bit for a class coming up called uh, Practicing Principles of Ancestral Knowledge in Collaboration with Dancing Earth. And I'm just going to show a little bit about cordage today. If you want to join us for more of that, um, we're going to be having the course coming up end of July and I'll have a link in the notes of this video. And so um, my ancestors have only been here uh, in Turtle Island since the late 1800s and early 1900s. Um, I was born in Pomo Territory in Santa Rosa, California. And uh, that's kind of my history. And um, so I hope you enjoy this video. We're teaching reverse wrap cordage. And I'm going to show you how to make it out of a potato chip bag today. So basically, like this is reverse wrap cordage, a uh, standard way of making cordage that you see around the world um, for making fishing line. This is a piece of fishing line I have with a bone hook on the end of it. And uh, But if you don't have access and you're in the city right now um, to getting fibers from plants and stuff like that, you can actually practice and make some pretty bomb cordage and strong cordage out of a potato chip bag. And so. I've actually made cordage with potato chip bags that works even for a bow drill fire and, uh, and so it's a resource that exists that we can make real strong cordage out of. Um, just to start, eat your chips, share them, have some nice food and, um, and then we're just going to cut the bag into strips and so I'm just opening up next to the seam to start and then I'm going to open this seam right down here so I can get a nice flat rectangular piece of material to work with. And then I'm just gonna create some, some strips. So if you have like the long material, you wanna cut the length ways that you're able to get the longest material and this will make it the least amount of splicing that you'll have to do as you make your material. I'm going to cut off these ends here that are already kind of broken and torn a little bit so I have a nice clean line and over here too that was where the seam was and that material is not going to be super easy to work with making cordage. So now that I have some clean lines, I can just start cutting down the and making strips. And I'm going for about a half inch uh, wide strip here. If you got nice sharp scissors like these, you can get the cut started and then just push along. I learned that from some fabric making folks back in the day. So I cut all these pieces right here um, into strips. And I'm going to take the first one. I'm going to take a few up here so it's easy to see. Got all these nice strips to work with. And this is what you would do with any natural fiber too, whether you're doing grass or a bark from a tree, um, whatever fiber plant you're using, or like sinew from an animal. You'd get your materials ready to go. And then to make reverse wrap cordage, you want to offset your pieces um, from the center. A little bit and that's so that when you splice in you don't have like uh, splices happening at the exact same point on your string you have an overlap and that keeps your string strong and then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna start twisting your cordage that you're making in one direction and I like to hold it with my left hand and I'm twisting clockwise with my right and once there starts to be enough tension in that you'll see that this flips easily over on itself and that's your first wrap and then I pinch with my left hand like that and you have a piece on top and a piece underneath and then with my right hand usually with cordage it's nice to lick your fingers just a little bit so you get a grip um, with the plastic I can feel already that actually that's counter to getting a good grip so you want dry hands more for the plastic and um, and so I'm reversing I'm taking this top piece and I'm continuing to wrap it and twist it clockwise and then that's between my forefinger and my thumb and then once I get enough uh, twist in there I reach under with my middle finger I pinch that under piece 
to the bottom of my forefinger and I flipped the whole thing over on itself. And so, and then the one that was underneath is now on top. And I take that top one and I start twisting it clockwise again. And then I grab it and wrap it under. And then the one that was on bottom is now on top. And I can do this again. Twisting clockwise, catching the other strand with my, my middle finger on my pointer and, and reversing it over. That's how it's a reverse wrap, this technique. And so you're basically twisting one way uh, clockwise and wrapping uh, counterclockwise. Twisting the individual stand, strands clockwise and wrapping the two of them counterclockwise. And by having that reverse, um, that reverse of the wrapping, they, they grab each other and they're able to hold. And so then we're starting to build our thread. All right, so we've come up on this point now where we've made some nice reverse wrap cordage to there. It's about that distance of six inches. And um, you can see here that the materials the way that we had offset them in the beginning are still offset, so one's shorter than the other. So we're gonna splice into the shorter end first, and um, that way the strength of the splice is not gonna be quite as strong as the strength of this side where there isn't a splice. And so by that offsetting again, basically what that's creating is uh, we're gonna have strong cordage if we don't put the splice at the same point, and that's why you always offset your material. And so to do a good splice, you just add some material in overlapping into this and and then we're going to hold these pieces together and twist them together and get them going on that clockwise twist action and and then we're going to start our reverse wrap again like that and so you can have this little piece um, basically you can either have this little piece sticking out the side and you can trim it off later, or you can choose to do a little bit longer and wrap it into the other side. And usually with natural fiber cordage, that's how I do it. Um, and my friends who are into big into astrology, they say that's probably because of my Virgo, being a Virgo, and my attention to these fine little details. But I love these fine little details, how you can make the cordage look real nice. Um, and to me that's the art of it over time while pra after practicing this for many years and so that's um, a spliced section there into it and we're coming now up right away on wanting to splice in for the other side so I'm gonna take this a little bit further and then I'm gonna add in a strip on this side now and I'm going to do this the other way so you can see it. This side you can see that the splice just disappeared in there. And this side, I'm just going to let it stick out and it can be trimmed off later. And so, holding that overlapped. Doing, I'm continuing with the uh, reverse wrap cordage making technique that we learned and basically taking the top strand and twisting it clockwise and then taking both strands and twisting them over each other counterclockwise. Clockwise top and counterclockwise with both, reversing the positions of the top and bottom strand. And So we can see these are the two splice points that we did down in there earlier on and this could be actually trimmed now and just clipped and you can see this cord is quite strong. I cannot break that um, even if I wanted to. I bet I could hang off that cord. Um, so it's kind of a nifty little resource that's around right now. Uh, personally I don't really like dig plastic that much but you know in this world that we do have potato chips bags around. It's a resource that we could think of and using another way. It's a great way to practice reverse wrap cordage and get to learn this technique uh, from resources that might just be in our houses and then you can just take this to the bush and any kind of material that's grass or fiber uh, related in any plant where you can find a fiber 
that can be um, turned into cordage with this technique. So I hope you learned something. I hope this was valuable. And uh, I'm gonna drop a little link in the notes below so you can check out the offering uh, we're doing with Dancing Earth, a full cordage making class. It's gonna have a lot more information in there, uh, working with fiber and other materials for making cordage. And then what you can do with making cordage, like weaving bags, uh, we're going to touch in on that and uh, weaving things like hammocks or fishing nets or making fishing line. We're going to briefly touch in on all that and show what you can do with all this cordage. So thanks a lot. I hope everyone's having a really good day and uh, maybe see you soon.